Hello and welcome to video number four of Full Course Pendulum for Advanced Experimenters. Uh, today's video will be focusing on the decoupling bearing at these two critical velocities, minus V and plus V, when the, pen, when the velocity of the pendulum is zero. So just going over what we explained in the previous video, number three, when the pendulum swings back and forth, it comes to these points here, and it stops, it makes a dead stop. Dead stop, and returns to this point here, which is velocity is maximum. The forces that uh, create this velocity, which I'm assuming now will be some velocity uh, akin to a ball bearing rolling down this ramp, curved ramp. And the velocities will be, this velocity will be a gradual velocity in, in speed um, from these two forces here. Force 1 going down and force 2 going across. Force 1 is pi squared meters per second squared and force 2 is a tangential force creating this maximum velocity here. But the pendulum will go through transitions from 0 to slightly Increasing in velocity, increasing in velocity, increasing in velocity to maximum. Increasing, decreasing, decreasing, stop. Now, as we explained in video number three, when the pendulum stops and has no more inertia, uh, linear inertia, then it's prone to being grabbed by the earth. Uh, forces in the, the holding string or wire and it's this static friction we have to examine very carefully. Uh, we have to go in it very deep. It's taken us probably three videos to get here because it's very important. Because if it's not 100% decoupling, and if we haven't achieved 100% decoupling, then there's the validity of the pendulum is in question. So uh, basically, have uh, we been conned? Or is this pendulum a, a, an incredible device that's actually proving the earth spinning? So, okay, from now on, I think I'll just move on to the to showing the actual experiment to prove uh, and analyze that uh, friction of this decoupling bearing here. This with the bearing that allows the earth to spin, not the swinging pendulum, not the swinging bearing, but the bearing up here. It also allows it to, the Earth to spin underneath the pendulum. So here we go. Let's go to that experiment now. Okay, so here in my setup for the experiment to analyse the coefficient of decoupling of our decoupling bearing at the two velocities v minus and v plus. Basically, I uh, have a levelling platform that. Uh, gives me a level adjustable by these screws. I have my static pendulum mounted on the needle point bearing at this stage. I remember in um, Video number three, we had two uh, experimental friction bearings. The one I'm using now is the needle point. It is uh, driven, this wheel here representing the earth, is driven by a tooth, a tooth belt which is uh, hooked to the hour hand of a small clock motor. And uh, Basically, it gives me a representation of my latitude. So, one revolution of the Earth, indicated by this needle, is roughly my latitude, which is roughly 36, 33 hours, I forget which it was it is. Anyway, it's certainly more than 24, which is the North Pole, which would have been direct drive. 
Okay, now the objective of this experiment is to analyse this decoupling bearing as we said before. And we do that by placing our static 480 gram bearing on top of the pendulum spindle. Now, what we're trying to achieve is to measure this decoupling. Ideally, if the uh, bearing is 100% efficient, the earth would take a full 360 degree turn, leaving the pendulum exactly where it was. That's if we had a static, pure static friction bearing. Now, because we have got no inertia from the swing, we expect that there'll be losses. Now, what we want to try and do is measure the extent of our loss to validate the, um, the, the pendulum, in fact, if it's, if it's any, uh, near, anywhere near efficient. So, what we're doing is Perhaps just just take a break here and uh, think about what what you think might happen. When I connect the belt, will the Earth turn? And so we set it in this position. Will the pendulum stay in sync with the needle and the Earth all the way around, doing a 360 turn? So when we wake up the next 36 hours later. We see the pendulum and the uh, needle in sync, 100% all the way. That's one uh, ideal. I don't expect, you know, I don't know. That could happen. Or we are going to see some sort of partial breakaway and lag where the, the Earth actually gets a little bit ahead of the, of the pendulum from its inertia. And at the end, 36 hours from now, we see some sort of mismatch between the, the Earth and the pendulum. Now, ideally, if it's a if it's a 180 degree mismatch, or even better, 270 degree mismatch, then we have a really good uh, decoupling effect. So, I'll just give you a couple of minutes to think about what you think might happen when I connect this belt up and we wait 36 hours later to see if there's any misalignment between the, the needle indicator and the pendulum. So let's all just wait 36 hours and uh, we'll um, see what happens, eh? Well, you haven't got time for that, so I can tell you what happens. The needle and the pendulum stay in sync for the whole 360 degree revolution. There is no lag at all which uh, shocked me quite a bit. I was, wasn't prepared for that. I would thought there would have been at least some, some sort of decoupling. Which now means that at VO and VO minus and VO plus, we have 100% coupling between the pendulum and the earth. Now, for that millisecond or whatever they're sitting, to, you know, whatever that pendulum stops for, there is a hundred percent, it's hundred percent coupling. I um, will now have to investigate. We know that it's uh, at the middle, at the maximum, there is hundred percent decoupling, which we've seen from the ver earlier videos, from the pendulum swinging. But now we have to determine halfway along is there any decoupling or coupling 
um, which is starting to show some flaws in the pendulum. And uh, again, like I said, I was shocked. And it, it's because of that, I had to go to another level of experiments. I thought I could have left this, uh, this decoupling experiments by now and moved on to some other more critical uh, factors when designing the pendulum, but we have to stay with it until we actually analyse it 100% and get a result that we can work with. But right now it's looking uh, very much like the pendulum may have a, a Hilly's keel, a Hilly's heel. So, all right, so anyway, this is about all we can do for this at this moment. So I think we should now regroup and I'll start preparing for another experiment, which will be experiment number five, which will take this to another level. So thanks very much for watching and uh, see you in the next video.